One of the things that the RE says is that, it, repeatedly he says, I'm only giving over the Kabbalah of the, of the world of Yosher, of the world of hierarchy. I'm not giving over the Kabbalah of the world of Igulim, which is the circle world. And really, the, the, the Yosher, or the world of hierarchy, is more the masculine modality in the masculine world, and the Igulim, the circle world, is really the feminine. So I understand that as an invitation for women to unpack the Kabbalah of their eye center, of their circle, circular sense of the world, their non-hierarchical, their kind of um, like an, an innate um, aptitude or preference for circle world consciousness, which is really what a lot of this teaching is about. It's about the, the, the uh, collapsing of hierarchy and the movement into like Chavez Lagamre, completely equal. It's a non-hierarchical Mo model and consciousness, which Meaning is that men and women are equal. That not only men and women are equal, but everything feminine. Like that's where we're headed. Everything feminine is moving into like equality with its masculine, whatever it okay. is, so that there is a collapse of hierarchy, and where we move into circle consciousness, circle, circular reality. One of the things, it's a very interesting idea, that in the seventh stage, where the Ari talks about it as panim ba panim, shave la gamre, face to face and completely equal. So actually the Alter Rebbe of Chabad says, actually it's even more than that, that actually the, the polarity is reverse and the feminine who in her diminishment is like a spring compressed and released, actually moves beyond her starting point and, the, and she becomes a mashpia to the masculine. So everyone asks, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that then the, the oppression is going to be reversed and women are going to be oppressing men like men of oppressed women or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and really the understanding is that the feminine, when it becomes a mashpia, what is her, what is she going to be, what influence is she going to be exerting? She's going to be exerting non-hierarchical consciousness. Like that's what it means that the feminine is going to be the mashpia, like non-hierarchy is going to rule. When I use the term circular consciousness, um, I'm, it's used Kabbalistically to refer to non-hierarchical consciousness. A circle has no beginning or end, and every point is equidistant from its center. So it's the, the, the symbol for non-hierarchical consciousness, whereas Yosher, which is a straight line, has a top and a bottom, and above and a below, and so it represents a hierarchical modality. So now we're in Yosher, like hierarchical mode, and we're all trying to keep up with the Joneses, and somehow that's one of the incentives that keeps us growing and evolving, a fire under our pants, a carrot in front that keeps us moving. But eventually we're going to come into our place, and, and the hierarchy is going to melt away, and we'll see that we're all actually just standing on the circumference of a circle, equidistant from the center. And so in the seventh stage, um, the Ari talks about how he and she, the masculine and the feminine, become face to face and completely equal. But the Alter Rebbe of Chabad talks about how actually it's even more than that, that the feminine in her diminishment is like a spring compressed and released, and that the momentum of that release actually propels her beyond her starting point, and she supersedes her, her kind of benzug, her masculine counterpart. And, um, and so the question is, well, then is this going to start a whole new cycle, but of reverse, where he, she's going to you know, oppress him just like he's, he's oppressed her or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that no, when the feminine becomes the influencer, where her model, her, her, her circle nature, circular nature prevails, I mean, when the feminine prevails, what that means is that her, her non-hierarchical 
sensibility and understanding of the world is going to rule, mm -hmm. meaning that there is not going to be hierarchy anymore. And so Kabbalistically, there is the idea that as we move through all the millennia, like there's a seventh millennia, and an eighth, and a ninth, and a tenth, and what characterizes each one is that the universe is coming into a more, uh, hierarchy is dissolving, and the universe is becoming more and more fully and totally equal.